In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, what are the different categories of fire alarm system? Now, just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is just one in a series that we've made on the subject of fire alarms. These videos can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your ongoing CPD, and you'll receive a certificate to prove that you've completed the course. So we've discussed grades of fire detection in a previous video, and now we're looking at categories. What's the difference? Well, a grade in this context is all about the system and the equipment that's being used, whereas categories are more about what the fire detection system is protecting. The categories break down into two areas with the identifying letters L and P, where L stands for the protection of life, and P stands for the protection of property. These are the identifying letters used in BS 5839-1, but this information doesn't relate so much to dwellings. For that, you need to refer to BS 5839-6. This standard adds an additional identifying letter, which is a D for dwelling, and these are the categories that we'll be looking at in this video. Much of the information we'll be referring to can be found in the Practical Guide to Grade D Fire Alarm Systems, available on docstore.co.uk, and the Electrician's Guide to Fire Detection and Fire Alarm Systems, published by the IET. So let's break it down. Category LD indicates a fire detection and fire alarm system intended for the protection of life. This is then broken down into further categories with a number at the end that gives more information. These are categories LD1, LD2 and LD3. Category LD1 is a system installed throughout the dwelling incorporating detectors in all circulation spaces that form part of the escape routes from the dwelling and in all rooms and areas in which fire might start other than toilets, bathrooms and shower rooms. This is the most extensive system of protection for a dwelling and that can be seen from how far the installation of detectors goes. If we look at the layout for a typical house like this one and apply the information about an LD1 system, we can see that we'd need detectors in the escape routes and we'll see that's a common thread throughout all the life protection categories. So that means detection in the hallway and on the landing. There's no doors between the staircase and these routes in this property, so that's covered. And detectors need to remain accessible, so putting them over stairwells is not advised. Then there's the rooms and areas in which a fire might start, so that's pretty much every other room. The kitchen will need one, and the living room will need coverage. Bedrooms are a risk, and so would require detectors. Other rooms, which may not be the principal living space or a high-risk area, will still need coverage according to this category, because fires could start in them. So spaces like dining rooms, studies, and utility rooms will also need them. In fact, the only rooms we wouldn't put them in are toilets, bathrooms and shower rooms as stated in the definition. The loft is a special case as it's not an area where a fire would normally break out. However, if there is a solar PV installation on the property and the loft contains an inverter for the system, then it would require a detector in that space. Moving on to the next system, we've got category LD2. This is a system incorporating detectors in all circulation spaces that form part of the escape routes from the dwelling and in all rooms or areas that present a high fire risk to occupants. So this is a slight step away from areas where fires could start and now focuses on high risk areas. The rules on escape routes still apply, so there's no change there. But where else would detectors be required? Well, again, the kitchen is a high risk area as most fires in dwellings originate in the kitchen. It's easy to see why as there's often open flames from gas hobs, large electrical loads, boiling oil, and so on. So this space would definitely need a detector. However, if a fire should start in the kitchen, there's usually someone awake and involved in whatever's started the fire, even if they've left their chip pan unattended for a few moments. So it's interesting to note that while most fires start in the kitchen, the most fatalities from house fires are from fires that originate in what's referred to as the principal habitable room. This is usually the living room if you're in the north or lounge if you're in the south, but actually it's really where homeowners tend to hang out in their houses with the most people and should really be found by doing a risk assessment on the property and the way that it's expected to be used. Fires that start here could be because of people going to bed or falling asleep while relaxing with candles burning or cigarettes lit or perhaps electrical fires from sockets with too many items of entertainment equipment connected. So this principal habitable room will need detection coverage as well. Bedrooms are not a high risk area and so wouldn't typically require a detector. However, consideration should be given to specific risks arising within this room, again, particularly in connection with smoking. It's an extremely dangerous situation if someone falls asleep in bed with a lit cigarette. And in these circumstances, a detector could save someone's life. Other rooms that are not the principal habitable room, like the dining room and study, would not typically require detection in them under an LD2 system. The same guidance goes for lofts as an LD1 system. If it has an inverter or similar for a PV system, then it should have smoke alarms installed. 
It's worth noting that in Scotland and Northern Ireland, this category of system, the LD2, is the starting point for all new builds and may need to be higher in certain circumstances. In England and Wales, the starting point for all new builds is category LD3, which is a system incorporating detectors in all circulation spaces that form part of the escape route from the dwelling. So in our example home, you would only need to install detection to the hallway and to the landing in order to cover the escape routes. No other room would require one. This is purely to alert people to the fact that their route out of the building is under threat from a fire, either in that space or from smoke leaking into it from another room. The other overarching category of system in BS 5839-6 is PD. So again, you've got that P for the protection of property, modified with the D for dwelling. There's just two subcategories for this designation, which are category PD1, which is a system installed throughout the dwelling, incorporating detectors in all rooms and areas in which fire might start, other than toilets, bathrooms and shower rooms, and category PD2, which is a system incorporating detectors only in defined rooms or areas of the dwelling in which the risk of fire to property is judged to warrant their provision. A protection of property categorization would be pretty unusual for a dwelling as it's mainly used in BS 5839-1 for buildings that aren't regularly occupied by people or where the property has high commercial or cultural value, neither of which would take priority over the protection of life categorization for a dwelling. However, it is often the case that a building that has an alarm system for the protection of life will also cover the requirements for the protection of the property anyway. So there we go, those are the different categories of fire alarm, but you may be wondering how do we know which category of alarm to install? To find out, check out this video right here, or click the link in the description below to watch it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD and you'll receive a certificate as well. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.